Hi everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Marley Bird with us today to create this Bernat crochet blank, sorry, Bernat crochet basket using Bernat blanket Ogo. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm making a blanket now. <laughs> <laughs> we almost got there. Okay. Um, we are making a basket using Bernat Blanket Ogo today. My name is Renee L from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat, and we will make sure that Marley answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from and what you would like to store in these baskets. Over to you, Marley. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I see a lot of familiar faces in here. It's nice to have you here. Um, those of you who are here in America, you made it through Thanksgiving. Congratulations. You've made it <laughs> into the first of the week, right? And we are in the thick of making things for the holidays for the most of us, um, whether it's for friends, families, coworkers, maybe teachers, um, who knows? The great thing about this basket is that it's perfect for any of those people or simply just a basket to put by your like where you sit to knit and crochet all the time just to collect maybe your um scrap yarn or your uh like your your ends that you cut off and stuff I don't know it's just there's a lot of options with this little basket it's, it's great um as you can see the basket has a little tiny handle on it you can make the basket without the handle you guys so if you want to just make the basket and have it just be a standalone piece you could do that you can make it with the handle you can even make this where it you could put a plant inside and then it's just like a I'm going to call it a plant cozy, but that's not the word for it. But you know what I mean? Like a, a cover for your plant. Um, it'd be something fun to do. This pattern itself uses the Bernat Blanket Ogo. This is available at Michael's. Um, it's a lot of fun to use. It is the same blanket yarn that you know and love. It's just given to you in a different type of, of format, a different type of put up. It has the same amount of yarn as a ball of blanket. I know it doesn't look like that, guys. I, I mean, even the first time they showed us these, the other influencers and I were like, there's no way. And it is, it's the, it's the exact same amount of yarn. It's the 10.5 ounces of yarn is in this Ogo. And that's the same as what's in the, the blanket Ogo ball. Um, so it's really easy just to grab one of these and make yourself some fun, some fun baskets. The stitch we're going to use today is a single crochet and a single crochet split stitch or a split single crochet. Now I'm going to show you how to do both of those. And I also just want to throw out there. If you on your own decide that the split single crochet just isn't for you and you just want to do regular single crochets, you absolutely can do that. Okay. So having, I'm saying that early on. So that way, as we're going in, if you're finding it a struggle to do the split single crochet, don't think it's the end of the world. Just do single crochets and you can still make yourself a really great basket. Are we cool with that? Thumbs up. Everybody good. Yeah. I can see you. So, all right. Thank you, Shirley. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. So we're going to go down to my hands and we're going to just jump in and get started. So I have gone ahead and I have printed off the pattern itself. The link to this, I think was sent to you in an email, but it's probably also put into the chat. Uh, Renee is usually pretty good at that. Did you get on that Renee? You all over that? <laughs> yeah, we got it. Awesome. Um, so you can see these baskets are super cute. Um, you could make them different sizes. You know, it all depends on how big you want to make the base. Uh, I think the greatest thing about these, I don't know about you guys, but like stitch counts for these, to me, it doesn't really matter. It's like, make it as big as you want, as small as you want. And if you get roughly the idea of how the handle works, you can, you can make these any size you want. As you're looking at a pattern like this, you can see down here, it tells you the different yarn you need. Now it says one Ogo and it shows you three different colors of Ogos, right? I, I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty savvy enough to realize that that means you need one of these to make that one, one of these to make that one, one of these to make that one. You don't need all three to just make one, but I just wanna point that out. You're using a very large hook. You use an N hook or larger, and that's going to help you with that split single crochet. Um, when we do the split single crochets, it's a little tricky to get into the single crochet sometimes. So using a bigger hook makes that really helpful. Um, you also wanna use a stitch marker because we're gonna work as a spiral with this. So being able to mark that first stitch of the round will be helpful over here in the abbreviations. Nothing here you probably have not seen before except the split single crochet. Um, so we're gonna talk about this and I don't know if you guys can really see that or not, 
But the only difference between a single crochet and a split single crochet is where we put our hook. With the regular single crochet, we put our hook underneath both legs at the top or underneath that V. When we do the split single crochet, we essentially split the post of the single crochet. We put it in between um, the two legs of the post. And so it gives us a knit type look, okay? Um, let's see here to begin with, we're gonna add the OGO, carefully cut the plastic tie. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Pull the tie out and start crocheting. Um, you can make these baskets. Um, I call it OGO with the flow, where you just start with one color and go all the way until you get to the end of the other color. If you have a couple OGOs maybe left over from a couple projects, you could split the colors up and mix and match colors and make them instead of big bold stripes like this, maybe you do um, more narrow stripes or, or other different color options. The sky is the limit, really. You can do anything you want at this um, for this blanket. As I mentioned, we're not going to um, join at the end of our rounds with like a slip stitch. We're gonna work in a giant spiral. So we wanna make sure that we count um, that first space. All right, so Ogo, in case you've never seen it before, this is exactly what it looks like. You're gonna take this part off the insert and this is typically recyclable. So check your local recycle um, qualifications and you can typically recycle this, but don't do it right away because if you look at the inside, you're gonna notice that you have your washing instructions. It also tells you how to begin the Ogo if you've never done it before, okay? Um, not only that, but this also has all of your yarn information on it right here. Um, one thing that I've done now that I've used Ogo so many times is I've tend to, I'll cut this top flap off and cut this portion off and I'll keep this um, with my Ogo. So that way I know what the different colors are. That's just a little option, something you could do if you want. Okay, when you get your Ogo, it has this plastic right here. You're gonna cut that. Pull that plastic out and get rid of that with the recycled bit. And then here's your Ogo. You have the bit here where it pulls from the outside. And ideally that's where you want to pull from. That's the way the Ogo was designed to um, just have continuous flow is by pulling from the outside. Or there is the inside portion right over here. Just come over here, get that inside portion out. But when you do that, you can see you get a little bit of the guts that you're trying to prevent and not have by using Ogo, right? So ideally you wanna pull from the outside. The only reason I'm showing you from the inside is because this is the color I have today. And if you notice, this is black <laughs> and we're supposed to start with our darkest color for this blank or this basket. I almost said blanket too, Renee, for this basket. And I know that you're not gonna be able to see the black. So I'm gonna start with this, um, gosh, it looks like a, a uh, um, oh my gosh, I can't. Ochre? What gold ochre? -ish. Oh, that's a. I was thinking more along the lines of like butterscotch. <laughs> yes, that's a perfect. <laughs> you way tell to where my it. brain is. It's like a butterscotch <laughs> toffee color. It's so pretty. So I'm going to use this color first. Um, if you wanted to separate these off, you could. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to set this aside. And we're going to use this color. All right. I'm going to set this aside, and we are going to just jump in with the pattern. So we begin the darkest shade, as I said, I'm using the lighter of the, the shades and we're gonna chain two. So I'm gonna start off with the slip knot and I am going to assume all of you know how to do a slip knot if you're here in this class. So I'm just gonna put a slip knot directly on my hook and we do a chain two. So chain one and chain two. Right here is the first chain that we did. We're gonna place six regular single crochets into that chain, but because we're going to do a split single crochet into those six, I wanna mention that you definitely wanna make sure that these are nice and loose, okay? You don't wanna make them super tight, otherwise it'll make it so hard for you to get into them with that split single crochet. So I'm just going into that first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, Make sure you pull it all the way up, yarn over and draw through two. Now it gets a little funky because the, the, I shouldn't say funky, it, it's a little tricky to see. 
um, because the yarn is fluffy, but just kind of try and keep an eye on the loop that you're going into. If you wanted to use your marker right now to kind of just mark that loop so you know where it is, so you don't lose your orientation, you can do that. And so I'm just gonna keep going into that same loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. I've already lost count. I think that's five. I'm gonna take my marker out now. I think this is my last one. And I'll show you how I'm gonna check on that. So I'm not gonna turn my work or anything. I'm gonna try and find my V's up here at the top. I don't know if you can see them. It's probably a little tricky to see. But one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six single crochets. Um, Renee, is this too difficult to see with the Burnett blanket on the video? Um, I think it's good. You, you good? Lindsay, okay. do you approve of lighting? I think it's good. Okay. I think so, yes. Okay, I just wanna make sure, I do have a light right above it. So I'm hoping that everybody can see. All right, if for some reason I need to do this with a different yarn, just so people can see, please let me know, okay? Okay, we will do. All right, so at the end of this round, it says we're gonna to continue to work in spirals. So instead of going into the top of the first single crochet, like you normally would do, so that's the top of the first single crochet, we're actually going to go in between these two strands of the single crochet. So I'm gonna grab a little helper thing here. This is the top of the single crochet. This is the bait or the, the, the post of the single crochet. We're gonna be putting our, our hook right there into that post. And by doing that, it's going to give us this V look that looks like knitting. So I'm going to, I went right into where I just showed you, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. And I'm gonna pause right there. I'm going to mark that V behind the loop on my hook to know that that's the, the first stitch of my round. Now I've done that once, so I have to do it again. So there's the same spot I went into, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Okay, doesn't look like much yet. We're gonna go to the next one. So I come over here, we have this one, find your post. There's the post of my stitch right there. I'm gonna go between them, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. The good news is guys, I've done several videos on YouTube for the split single crochet, um, like we did, an entire crochet along and knit along last year for some hand warmers. Um, and I did the split single crochet into three in one hand warmers. So if for some reason you're struggling with this because um, for, for whatever reason, I mean, who knows why, um, you can always check out those videos as well. My, my point there is that don't, don't think that just because maybe you're not getting it right now that there might be uh, that you're, you know, you can't do it. You can absolutely do this. It's just gonna be tricky. I think part of me feels like I think I should use a worsted weight, you guys. I don't think people can see. Yeah, that's okay. If you feel like it's gonna be more visible. I do. I think people are gonna see better if I use a different yarn. So I'm just gonna grab a different yarn real quick. Perfect. I don't know. It's everybody agreed, you guys? What do you guys think? I see a lot of people nodding their heads. Okay, yeah. let me grab a different yarn. Luckily, I have other yarn right here that I can quickly grab. Awesome. And you know, it's never a bad idea to kind of test out a new pattern on a yarn where it's a little easier to see the stitches and then you can work it up in, right. in a thicker yarn. Can you guys see this yellow if I use yellow? I think that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, we're shifting here last minute, but I think it'll be a better, better option. All right. Yeah. So we're going to start this again. We weren't too far into it, which is great. So I'm gonna chain two. So I'm gonna make my slip knot, put it on my hook, chain one, chain two. Now I'll do my six single crochet all into that first chain. So there's one, 
two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, you can already see that better, right? So what I was showing you before is typically at the start of the row, we would join with the slip stitch right there into the top of a single crochet, like right there in that V, right? But if you look underneath that V, you see the post right there. It looks like a V also. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our crochet hook and we're gonna pierce like in between that string and that string, we're gonna pierce it right there into the post of the stitch. Can you guys see the difference? So that's in the post of the stitch. This is if we were going in the V. So they're two distinctively different spots, okay? So, I come up here. I'm gonna go into that post. And this is why I said you gotta make those single crochets a little bit big, because if you make them too tight, your post of the V is going to be too snug to get into. There's one. Now make sure that this single crochet you make in there is not real tight also. And there's two. Now again, you wanna put a marker in that first one that we did because it lets you know that it's the start of the round. That was the first one we did on this round, okay? How are we doing? All right, going to the next one. This is where I normally would go, is right there into the top of that stitch. Instead, I'm gonna go in between those two um, legs right there. I'm gonna just pierce right into it, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, go into it again, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. This is where I normally would go, is right there. I said, I'm going right into that V, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, go into it again, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. This is where I normally would go, is right there. So I'm going to go down here now, pierce the V, maybe. This one's getting a little snug on me. I must have gotten too relaxed with things. And the good news is, y'all, this part is the bottom of your uh, basket, so it's never going to show, right? Unless you're dumping your basket out. Oh, my stitch um, Looks like we lost your video for some reason, Marley. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. Is it back? Yes, it's back. All right, let me switch so that it's landscape, hopefully. Landscape any day now. There you go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, that was loud. I apologize. And over here to get into this one. Um, sometimes you guys, I will use my hook to kind of get into there to see where I'm going if the stitch has tightened up a little, but then also being able to just use a tool to kind of just get a little bigger. I don't know why I got a little tight there, probably because I was pulling on the string at the start. I'm just going to go right in there and get past this. One and two. So where am I at on numbers? I think that was my first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have two more to make. So it should go right into that space there, but it's so small. So I'm actually just going to ignore it here at the start. And so that's my 12. So this is where I would be going in between this one, this is gonna be the start of my next. So this would be my row three 
right? So row three, we're gonna do two split single crochets in this first one and then one in the next. So I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna do a different marker this time so it doesn't fall out. Precisely why I rarely use those markers. So that's one and two. And hopefully by this round, you can see kind of how loose you need to be and it'll be a little bit easier to get in between that V. So there's one, so you do two in the next one. So there's one, two, and then one in the next, and two in the next. And what you'll notice you guys is it's this first draw up, it's that first loop there. That's what we end up going into, right? That's the loop we're going into when we work into that next round. So you really wanna make sure that first, that first string you pull up, the first yarn over you pull up, that's the one that needs to be a little bit nice and loose. So that way you can get, get into that V section. How's everybody doing? The first round, as you can see, it's a little tricky. Even I had a little trouble getting into one of mine, but at the end, I just plan on closing everything up with my um, tail and it'll just be hidden. Everything will be good. Now this one, where am I? Right there. See how I got that one a little tight? That's what you don't want. You don't want them to come up a little tight because that's where it gets super, tricky and hard. And guys, this is something that like, even when I do these, I usually have to work a couple rounds. Um, and then I usually will rip it out and do it again, just to kind of be like, oh, okay, so that's the tension I need um, before I move, move forward. I wanna make sure I didn't make this one too tight. How's everybody doing, Renee? Good, I'm just catching up on some questions. Um, I am going to pull up my list. So Margie asked if it could be made with two handles. Yeah, absolutely. So the handles, when you get to those, you actually just um, do some chains to make it the size that you want the handles you want. And you only skip like eight stitches or something along those lines. So you could, you could do that, you know, skip stitches over here and do chains and then skip stitches over here and do chains. So you could make it with two handles very easily very easily. Awesome. Um, and Anne-Marie asked, could you start with a magic ring instead? Yes. Perfect. Yes, you could. And I don't know why they didn't, but um, yes, you could. Awesome. Yeah. And then um, as a fan of stitch markers, I think you'll like this question. Okay. Where is your preference for putting down the stitch marker to show this, like, would you do the start of the row, the end of the row? Where would you normally put it? Um, I do it after the first stitch. Like right now, you just saw I took that one out because that's going to be my first stitch. So I, I do the first stitch, like I finish the first stitch, and then I mark it. Awesome. And so I'm going to do one more <laughs> and I'll let you get back to working. Keep up. So just real quickly, so right here on round four, you'll notice that we're increasing again. So you'll do two into one and then one and then one and then two and then one and then one. If you've done anything with any sort of increases before, this is very familiar, but you just wanna keep putting those stitches into that split um, space or into that post. All right, go ahead, Renee. Okay, so there was some discussion about using single crochet versus split single crochet. Um, what is the benefit to going with split? It's a look. Um, it's a little bit more dense than just a regular single crochet because you're actually making the fabric like inside the stitches of the previous round. Um, but it also gives a definitive look difference to a piece. It makes it look a little bit more knit like. Um, if we have a minute, I actually you know what I'm gonna say. I have a hat and mitten pattern that it's gonna be released soon that um, shows the split single crochet. I could show you guys if uh, we have time for that, but 
you know what, this will this will show it as well. So we'll just keep going, but it's gonna give a knit look because it looks like these V's all stack into each other. So they look different. Does, did that answer enough? Yeah, I think so. It's, okay. it's aesthetic and it's preference. Right. Perfect. All right. Sorry, <laughs> go for it. Oh, you're, you're good. I, hey, I appreciate the chat. So that works. <laughs> I just ask any question. I'm just going to be, this is, I mean, this is, this is essentially what you're doing for the whole piece is you're working these increases and you keep doing it until you get to, um, let's see how many. So it looks like it's once we get to the 10th round, we are, we don't increase anymore. So we're just increasing until we get to the 10th round. So I'm just going to keep going. So yeah, ask, ask away, ask questions. This is what we're just going to keep doing this together. Awesome. It's always those ones that are like a nice repeat. Yes. <laughs> it becomes a little more muscle memory. Right. And I don't know about you guys, but now that I'm on this round, whatever round I'm on, um, I mean, I'm around four, like, because I'm, I'm more consistent with how I'm doing my single crochets, like doing the split single crochets is a lot easier now because I am making sure that they're all the correct size. So it's easier to get into. Perfect. And sorry if we've answered this already. Um, can the split single crochet be worked in rows in addition to in the round? Um, that was from Janine. Not really, because, well, the hard part is when we turn, right? If you work into the split down here, it's going to pop these to the other side. So it's not going to look the same. So I, I, my answer, unless I'm Unless I'm wrong, my answer is going to be no. You typically do slit single crochets just straight, um, just around, around, around. I don't think you could do back and forth. And that's just the nature of looking at the back of the stitch. Like if I tried to do a split back here, it's it's not going to look right. It's not going to look right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you wouldn't mix single crochet and split, yeah? You could, like, that's a totally different look. Like you could have one where it was just single crochets and a, like you, it would be a different looking fabric. Um, I wouldn't do it, but that's, I mean, that's it's me. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say I wouldn't do it. There's actually something out there where I think it's, you do slip or single crochets and you do slips in a column and it makes it look like this really cool knit column in, in, I, I don't know how to describe it. It looks like ribbing, but it's not ribbing and it looks really neat. Yeah, um, that's just like a K, different texture. Yeah, Brianna K has been doing it lately and it looks fabulous. Um, I actually want to try it, but I haven't done it yet. But um, so yeah, my answer to that is going to be, yeah, you probably could combine the two. Sure, and last one. Um, I don't know how easy, easy this is going to be to demo close up. Um, can you ask Marley to show us where the hook should be in the split single crochet? So All right. I can try. Chris, hopefully this is helping a little bit. Okay, so I'm coming really close to the camera, as close as I can. So I'm at the start of my round. This, here, I'm gonna take that out. I'm at the start of my round. Right there is underneath the V that I normally would go into, right? But if you look underneath it, you can see that V down there, that's like the post of the stitch. Okay, I'm gonna like isolate it between my thumbs. You see it right there? It looks like a V. So instead of going underneath the Vs up here at the top, you're essentially going to pierce between the, the two legs of this V. You're gonna go right in between them, right there. Can you see that? Does that show up very well? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so you're just, you're piercing literally like the meat of the stitch right here. You're gonna go right into it. Um, it was before I used to think of it as like, I would take my hook and if you were to put your hook right here, like it's see how it kind of like fits perfectly between that V. And then you, if you just kind of rotate and just push in, that's that's where you wanna be. Awesome, thank Hopefully you. Um, and he said, when you pierce it, where does the hook come out on the back? Okay, I'll show you. Let me let me do one okay. and I'll show you. So right here, this is there's the, the part I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna pierce it. And when you look at the back side, so it's it's literally through it's through the, the meat of the stitch. And so there's there's the V that we used to go into or that you normally would go into. 
and then you're like you're like underneath it in that meaty part does that help perfect yeah that was very easy to see thank you okay good I think switching to the the worst away for the video is is a better decision now yeah because, just for the sake of camera it does make it easier yeah like when you make and you know what guys if this is the first time you've ever done one of these types of stitches play around with some worse weight yarn first grab some super saver and just play around with it a little bit um i mean shoot make make one of these just make it like big enough around for like <laughs> like get a bottle of wine make it big enough around to go be a little bit bigger than a bottle of wine and then just then so make it that big and then just make it straight up and you have yourself a wine cozy <laughs> boom there you go I we appreciate a swatch that has a purpose <laughs> yeah exactly exactly all right so i'm on round five so i did two into that first one so now i'm gonna do one into the next three and then i'll do two and then one into the next three yeah swatch with the purpose that's that's to i mean guys not gonna lie i'm already thinking that with this little tiny thing <laughs> so because why not and it's it makes it so that you know you have another gift done for this time of year and it's just something neat. It's just something neat. The great thing with this too, is it lends itself this particular stitch. It lends itself really well to color work, not just the striping type color work with the Burnett blanket, but if you wanted to do any sort of um, like graphic sort of pieces or whatnot on um, your knitting or your, not your knitting, your crochet, uh, doing split single crochets is a really good way to do the color work. That's why I chose it for a couple of my patterns here. Um, a hat pattern and a crochet pattern that look fair aisle, but um, they are, they are not. My dog is growling at me. She's trying to get my attention. It's not the dog, it's the kids, right y'all? And I get an amen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go a little bit slow here. If I'm going too fast, guys, let me know. But I know that just kind of watching on me on repeat really helps. So just let me know how I can help you best <laughs> to know what's going on. No Pearl. She wants to get into the, the action. Oh goodness, I'm sorry. Let me mute myself real quick. All good. As an owner of a Pomeranian, I relate. <laughs> so we'll give Marley a minute here. Um, everyone, uh, if you didn't already tell us what you plan to store in these, please let into the chat and let us know or let us know what you're working on for the holidays. If you have any stitch projects you're really excited about or you know ones that you wanna start or a skill that you wanna learn um, in order to make stuff, please let us know. Um, as for the newbies, so we do have some really great videos from previous Crochet 101 classes through Michaels. I would recommend giving those a view. So just sit tight through this class. Um, and then the video will be online here for this class within 24 hours, or I believe it's after 24 hours. And then I'm gonna send you a previous Crochet 101 video. I'll drop it into the chat and give that a watch after this class. It will help everything make a little bit more sense. How are we doing, Marley? I'm good, I'm out of breath. I ran up the stairs, I'm sorry. I had the dogs put away and then the kids must have let them down. So I apologize, um, but now I'm, Super out of breath. <laughs> All good. Okay. I heard the last bit of what you said about the crochet 101 and you're absolutely right. If you're an absolute beginner and you've never done this before, um, do the 101 class first. That will help. Absolutely. And even just watching it is great because you can pause it, you can rewind it. Um, like YouTube has options for speeding up or doing it super, super slow. I know that whenever I watch tutorials, I do it super slow. <laughs> so yeah. everyone's voices sound kind of funny, but it's at my pace. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And then you can come watch this afterwards. It'll, it'll be ready for you. Yep. Oh, 
All right, can you guys start to see the, the look, the knit stitch look on yours? Hopefully you're able to start to see it online. Are there any other questions right now? Yeah, I'm just going oh, through and catching up. Off. Gosh darn it. I'm sorry, Renee. <laughs> okay. All right. I think it was right here. Um, if this happens to you, I'm going to show you why I how I realized it. First way I realized it was I was doing one um, like increase, right? And then I was just doing three. So I did one, two, three, right? I was doing three. When I get over here, I do one, two, and if I do one, two, three, I'm not, I'm no longer, I didn't get to like my, my increase point again. See how one side looks bigger than the other? Ah, oh, gosh darn it. Oh, I hate that when that happens. I'm gonna rip back a little bit here. So I did increase. There's an increase, one, two, three. And then here's my increase. And my increase has always been going into that one stitch right there, right? And then I have one, two, three, four, and then I have an increase. Can you see how now all of a sudden I have four? So right over here, this increase would have been the start. Does that make sense to everybody? Because all of a sudden I just, I realize I realize that my increases, they're all going into that first stitch of when I do my increase, right? They're all going into that first stitch. And as I come over here, I, I not to my first stitch, by the time I did three, I had one more to go. And so I was like, oh, I, I'm on my next round because I have more stitches, obviously. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? I think so. And I think that clarifies a few questions that we had about stitch counts. Perfect. Okay. So for this, then I have my increase and then one, two, three, four. So in this one, I'm going to do my increase again. And it's easier guys to see those increases. I don't know if you guys are ever concerned about that. It's easier once you get going around to see where they are all stacked up on each other. If you struggle at all with that, you can always take a marker and like put it onto the, like the front leg of the first stitch that you increase each round. So that way you know, oh, look, that's where my increase should be. That's where my increase should be. Just make sure it's a different color than the start of your round. Um, so that way you don't get them confused. Um, I love markers. You guys, if you have followed me along for any classes, you know I love stitch markers. Anything to help me have some sort of a visual of what I'm doing is super helpful. How am I doing on time? All right, good. So I'm gonna try and get, I'm gonna get as many as I can here to get around and then change the direction. So that way I can show you how to do that handle. Those of you who are working along with me, is it getting easier to do those split single crochets? Are you finding making, like, honestly, it's that first loop you pull up. If you just make it a little bigger than your hook, that will help you out so much. This is one of those rare instances in crochet where making the actual stitch the size of your hook doesn't, doesn't really help out very much. So making that stitch a little bit bigger than your hook is going to be in your um, best interest when you're doing this particular stitch. Now I should have, once again, I was just going along, I should have increased back here. So I find where my increase, my last increase was, and then I count one, two, three, four, and then I fix. As people are answering, Renee, can you tell me what they're doing? Because I'm not able to look at the chat. Sure thing. Um, just gonna scroll up. We have a very active audience, which is okay. great. Um. Pattern clarification. Oh, somebody had asked, um, maybe this is once you're done your row, if you could 
hold up that swatch as an example of where each row is in the pattern and kind of just give a visual reference okay. if we have time. <laughs> okay. I can do my best. That message. Okay. Can Marley explain the written pattern with the swatch as a visual? Yeah, this is why the video is so essential, I think, for learning. Hey, Marley, mm -hmm. patterns can be a little tricky at first. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right, let me get to the end of the round here. All right, so I'm going to pull that up to hold it. So right here, I have like a second sort of like dot opening there. That's honestly where, remember I said I couldn't really get into... I couldn't get into that spot right there. So I was like, I'm just going to make single crochets there and move on. And I'm not concerned about that hole because I have this tail here that I can close that up when everything is done at, with my blanket. And um, it's, or not, why do I keep calling it a blanket? It's because it's the blanket yarn. I can close this <laughs> when it, when my basket is done and that hole will never show. So I'm not going to stress about it. So see you guys, even the professionals, like it's okay. Like it's okay to have a little bit of an oopsie. But as you are looking at this, hopefully you can start to see the columns where the increases are happening. They're right there, right there, 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 there. Um, so if you were to count this on the rounds, so we just finished round five, right? No, we just finished round six. So round six is the one that's it's still marked. So if I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at one of these. So that would be round six right there. And then if you looked around five, it would be right underneath it. And then round four, round three, and then this is where my round two was. And then round one is the one down there where I had that little, I'm out of markers. Then my round one is, is my base. So I don't know if that helps at all, kind of seeing the different rounds. You can see that as each increase round, you get one extra stitch between your increase points and that's what allows it to grow. And it looks, you know, a little, I don't know what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sided, six sided. I don't know what I have, I might be off, I don't know. But the point here is that it's a relatively round. Once you stop doing your increases, you actually just, just continue working. You don't do increases anymore and it's gonna start going straight up and down. So what I wanna do here, I'm gonna do one more round of increases and then I'm going to work straight up and down. And we're going to do, actually, no, I'm not gonna do another round of increases. I'm just gonna change to just, just plain old split single crochets now, which is something you could do too. So if you decide that you don't want to have uh, 54 stitches on yours, you want yours smaller, you can do that. Like sky's the limit with how many stitches Mar you want. Marley, we lost your video again. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so <laughs> sorry. What is happening? Did it come back? It came back for a second and now it's gone again. Okay, oh, and it's there back. we go. Why are we having, I mean, what is happening? <laughs> this doesn't happen to me like this. I swear you guys, I'm a professional. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are we good now? Yeah? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Jeez Louise. Okay. I am going to remove that so I can get into that stitch. So as I was saying, you can make this basket base as large as you want it to be. And once it reaches the size you want it to, you are just going to go round and round and round and no more increases. So you keep the same um, stitch count and you just work around. Still working those split single crochets, All right? So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do this all the way around. Make sure you get that first pull up loop is the one that you wanna make sure is nice and loose because that's the one you're going to be essentially going into when you go into your post it's that first loop that you pull up and then the handle i mean that's the last little bit of this you are going to end up chaining stitches for the size handle you want and then you skip some stitches on the actual bag and then rejoin those chains to the bag 
so that you get a hole, so you get an opening. And then as you work the next round, you continue with your split single crochets on the bag. But when you get to those chains, because there's not a single crochet for you to work a split single crochet into, you work single crochets and then you do your split single crochet. It's all very logical when you sit back and think about it. But honestly, this is, this is a very easy pattern. And I get that I'm saying that after I have so many years experience, but I, I do know also that if you can just sit down and just with even just single crochets, not the split, just a single crochet, do this, do this pattern just with single crochets to get the hang of it. And it will become very easy for you to do. Um, it's, it's, it's not uh, a very hard one. And if you let the yarn do all the work for you as far as color changes, it makes it even easier. And you get to the end of your round. So that would be the end of my round. Remember I'm marking my first stitch. So I'll take that off, go into the first one, work it. And there you go. All right, so now you can see it's starting to cup up on me a little bit and that's what I want. Now it's cupping in this way, it doesn't matter when it's all done, it'll, it'll go the other way. But I'm gonna just keep going here. Renee, go ahead and jump in whenever you want because I gotta get a couple rounds here complete. And I'm assuming you guys know how to do these split single crochets now. So I'm going to speed up a little bit because I'm not doing anything special. I'm literally just going into each stitch and doing that split single crochet. Awesome. And yeah, folks can always just watch it after and slow it down. Mm -hmm. All good. Okay. So I am going to got a lot of questions here. So just give me a mo. Oh, okay. Um, so if you have trouble remembering when to increase, so um, Alan Kay said he's been crocheting for a while, but he has trouble remembering when to increase. What are some suggestions on how to remember to make that a little easier? Okay, so one thing you could do is use those markers, like I said, and put the marker into the same stitch that you increase on each time. So as you're working increases like we are, you'll always have an extra stitch between those markers. So for this example, we were always increasing into the first of the two split single crochets from the previous round. So if I had wanted to put a marker into that first split single crochet of each one that I did the increase on, I would know that every time I got to that marker, I would be working an increase. So that's, I actually, and I do that a lot actually, um, because, uh, you know, sometimes you're crocheting at the end of the day and it's hard to remember when you're supposed to do those increases. And so having a marker there sort of as a visual, hey, don't forget you're supposed to do something special here makes things so much easier um, versus trying to remember. You know what I mean? Hopefully that was helpful. I think so. I think we can all use more markers in our lives. <laughs> I know. I love markers. I had somebody once comment, she was like, can you ever do anything without a marker? And I was like, yeah, I can. But if they're helpful to me, why would I? Just, I can, but do I want to? Yeah, it's just a tool. It's just a tool. You know, you don't have to use it, but I like to. <laughs> As we've said a few times in this classes across many different instructors, there is no crochet police, there is no nope. knitting police, there find the not. tools that work for you, we can just make recommendations. That's right. Now there are knitters and crochet teachers who have their own like personal stand on your soapbox rules, but <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, yeah, there's no knitting or crochet police. <laughs> my only one, I hate crocheting over my ends. I'm, I'm a big stickler on making sure you weave in your ends or bury your ends. It is not good enough to crochet over your ends. And I will stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you show me your work and you've done, like you've crocheted over your ends, am I going to point it out? No, but that's, 
that's my own rule. You don't do that. <laughs> I feel like that's another very common thing among our yeah. instructors. That is, that is the hard line. That is the hill to die on. You know what? And there are some though, that they're just like, no, nah, I'm all right with it. My best friend, she is a great crochet designer and she crochets over her ends all the time. And I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> she goes, oh, it doesn't bother me. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But you know, hey, to each their own. <laughs> Absolutely. So Alan followed up with, and actually I'll put this to the chat as well, because I think this could be a really fun creative exercise. Uh -huh. What are some alternatives that you could use if you can't purchase any markers? It's like, say you're just at home, you're oh. doing a tutorial. What would you yeah. use? Um, bobby pins are really good. Actually, one of my friends, Selena Baca, she's a stellar crochet teacher and designer. Um, she uses bobby pins. So like I have some bobby pins right here, which are actually really great. So like I could just put a bobby pin. And it just holds, it holds it play. It's actually quite brilliant. Um, <laughs> I love it. I don't typically use a safety pin and you might be like, well, these are like safety pins. Why don't you use a safety pin? It's because of the coil at the bottom of the safety pin. It snags my yarn. So mm. I don't use safety pins. Um, I have used um, a paper clip before. I've used an earring before. I've used, gosh, what else have I used? Um, just string. Like sometimes if I just have a, a, like I have to mark a stitch or something, I'll use um, some scrap yarn and I'll mark, I'll use a tapestry needle to pull the scrap yarn through the, the um, piece. Uh, another thing here, and this is good. It was Alan, right? Who asked the question about mm -hmm, the increases. Mm -hmm. um, if you have some scrap yarn like this, watch this. So let's say I wanted to do an increase in this one. Okay, so I'm gonna put my first stitch there and let's say that was supposed to be my increase. So instead of completing the whole stitch, I'm just gonna put my scrap yarn in there, sorry, and like that. So now that's just kind of hanging out there, right? So now it's essentially a marked stitch. And let's say I didn't need to increase every row, but let's say it was like three rounds. So then I get to three rounds, I could say, oh, okay, so that was my first one. And I could count one, two, three, and then I could pull up this string on the next one and then have it loop around again. So I could count how many increases I've done. Does that make, does that make any sense? Like, like just draping scrap yarn around where your increases are. So that way it can, it can give you a spot. It's another, it's another stitch marker is all it is. It's just another stitch marker that you then can pull out and have it work for you. I love this Lily philosophy Chin. of anything can be a stitch marker if you try yeah. hard enough. Yeah, yeah. Lily Chen does that a lot. She marks um, her increases with scrap yarn, like a long piece of yarn. Um, it's brilliant, especially like when she's working on um, like the sides of a sweater or uh, the the arm shaping of a sleeve. Like she's she's she is a brilliant designer and amazing instructor. Um, she's got all the tricks. Um, Gosh, what about anybody else have any such ideas? Um, Patty had an amazing one. She uses plastic bread ties, which I feel are the most oh. universal mm -hmm. free thing that comes with a different mm -hmm. thing you can receive. So you know what's really good with the plastic bread ties that are not the tie, but the plastic bread, you know, that's like the tab. Do you mm. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So say you have a long tail that you wanted to save so that you could seam something take those little tabs and use your tail and wrap it around the tab and let the tab just hold your tail in place so that it's there just kind of safe and sound out of the way until it's time for you to use it again. Genius. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> and you know what y'all, once you make one of these baskets for yourself, you, you can use it to store all your weird things that you use right, right. to remind yourself. All right, so I'm getting to the end of the round here and I'm gonna pretend that we were doing a, a handle so that way you guys could see how it would work. But obviously, I mean, if you're gonna work on this, it's probably gonna take you a couple hours. Obviously mine's not very big because I'm using a significantly smaller yarn, but it's less fuzzy so you guys could see. I think we made the right decision. Again, I say that because I don't think they could see very well. The other, at least not on camera. All right, so I'm here. And when you get to the handle, it's actually down here on the 30th round and it says chain 14. So I'm not gonna chain a full on 14, okay? But 
I'm also, I'm going rogue here. I'm gonna split single crochet into the first one just so that I can move my marker up and then I'm gonna chain 14. So then you would chain 14, I'm just gonna chain some. And then it says that you would uh, skip each of the first eight. So now you would skip eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you'd go to the next one and you join. Now, obviously I don't have 14. So I'm just gonna skip three, one, two, three. So this would be that one, that one, and that one. So I'd come over here to this one, put my hook in, work my slip. All right, do you see that? Now, obviously that's not very big. Yours will be bigger, it'll be 14. And then you just keep going around. So let's get around. Now you don't have to do that first single crochet like I did, but like I said, I wanted to be able to put my marker there. So I did it that way. Oops. And these, I'm still doing the split single crochet because I have a split single crochet that I can work into. But when I come back around and I get to those chains, I'm gonna do actual single crochets. It's just like when we're at the start of this basket and you had to do those single crochets. So again, you wanna make sure they're a little bit loose. So that way, when you do the next rounds, um, cause the round 32 and 33, you're gonna do split single crochets around the whole basket and those new 14 chains that you did. That makes it lift up a little bit. Does that make sense to everybody? Am I clear in what I'm trying to say about needing to do the single crochets so that way you can do the following rounds with the split single crochets? I love these Zoom classes because I can get the instant feedback from you guys because you can tell me if I'm not being clear enough or I need to be a little bit more clear or give you more instruction on something. And I love being able to answer questions to help you out. You could tell when I was getting more comfortable, see how my, my stitches got a little bit more snug. So now I'm struggling to get into them a little bit. You'll notice that too. As you get a little bit more comfortable, you're like, oh, I need to loosen up. Dude, I think I'm gonna start using the bobby pin more often. This is brilliant. Like it's not falling out and it's just like, just kind of sitting there. <laughs> Every new <laughs> hacks she, all the time. I forgot about that. And I'm just like, you know, that's so smart. And they come in like huge packs, right? Yeah. All right, so here I am to the start. Again, you would have your chains right here unless you did what I did. I'm just gonna do this first one with my split. So now I'm gonna work into my chain. So I only did like four or five chains. So I'm gonna just work into each chain and do a single crochet. Now, having said that, if you wanted to work around the chain, you could do that. So the pattern is written that it says to do one single crochet in each of the, these chains. So that's where you literally would go into the chain. You can see, you can see you get that, right? But you get kind of that little lip. So I'm gonna argue on the side of why not just go into that big loop and just make your chains like this, or not chains, but your single crochets, right? So I'm just gonna make them like that. And then you get back over here to where you're at the, the body of the piece again. So you're back to split single crochets. Like to me, that, that looks better, but that's me. And again, this basket is yours. So you can do whatever you want. So you finish this round and then you have two more rounds of just the split and everything's, it'll come out fine. But can you see how that basket handles there? So the person who asked before, could you do two handles? Yeah, you could. Like if you don't wanna count stitches, honestly, markers, we're gonna talk about markers again. Fold your piece in half, take markers and be like, okay, so this is gonna be the start of one of my handles. This will be the other side, right? Cause they're adjacent. And then we'll just do the same over here. Let's see, like right there and about right, right there. And so then if you wanted to even them out, you could count the stitches between those two markers. But now you roughly have them evened out, right? On either side or whatever it is. I mean, maybe not that one. Like that should have been more around here. I was off. But again, markers in place, you can kind of mess with them. So then you just do what you did over here. You do it over there and you could have two handles. Does that make sense to everybody? That's like the perfect size for a, a bottle of wine, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on social media to see my bottle of wine. Um, <laughs> uh, then as far as weaving in the end, you can see here, all right, so I'm cupping it in. You can see this is really supposed to be the outside. So you can turn it out like that. You can see how it looks like a knit stitch. 
you see how it looks like knit stitches? And when you go to weave in your ends, just thread your tail onto your tapestry needle. These little needles are fantastic. You can get them at Michael's. I showed you the wrong side, not that side. We went this side. I wasn't even paying attention. Those are my knits, you see them? See how pretty my knits are? I'm gonna go to this side. And when you close this up, I'm gonna close up my hole. Just gonna go in around everything. Make sure it gets nice and close. And yes, the person who asked if you could use a magic or adjustable ring or a magic ring, yeah, you absolutely could at the start. Um, and then just weave in your end at the end of that and you'll be good. See, little holes gone. So there's the bottom, sits right there. And if I do make this into a wine cozy, I am gonna do two handles because then we could carry it and be a cool gift. And that look pretty, looks pretty. Love it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, nothing like dogs barking, the, the video camera going off twice. This is great, this is awesome. I'm so grateful y'all stuck around with me. Thank you, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, are there any more questions? Any more questions, y'all? Um, quite a few, but I think they're beginner level. And I think hopefully the asking, will help. I see if they're asking me for a bag for scale. I don't have an actual bag here. They are large bags. Um, you can see on the, the pattern, it gives you approximate size of 10 inches in diameter and uh, 11 and a quarter inches tall. So it's like a, a ruler size tall. It's a big bag. It's a big bag. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Meg Brown, is that you working on it? Look at that. She's doing it. It looks like it's dark yarn too. You're doing a great job. Look at that. Oh, she's got the one that's like gray and black and white, the Ogo. I love that one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much for everything, um, being here with me and joining in and participating. Like that's such a big part when we're in a class like this because it's relatively easy stitches and your participation makes the time go. And I, I love that I'm able to answer your questions and such. Thank you. And thank you, Renee, for um, being the amazing moderator and um, MC, I guess is what I should call you. <laughs> You guys I'm just great. hosting my own late night show and you're the guest. It's great. Oh, there you go. Chital, did you get it? It's all done. I saw you working on some. Yeah. And Teresa and Christine. Oh my gosh. Look at all you guys. You guys are doing great. Teresa's doing awesome too. I love it. Okay. So when you guys make your baskets, make sure you share with us on social media. Okay. Use hashtag yarn spo, or if you want to tag me, I'm the Marley bird on Instagram or hashtag Marley bird or hashtag make it with Michaels. Okay. I want to see your bags. Christopher, did you do it? Look at you, Christopher. Oh, Christopher's he's cruising y'all. He's going to have a basket by the end of the night. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. So that's it from, I've literally, I will keep talking all night long. So I'm going to shut up. Renee, it's all you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. Um, as Marley said, don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. Um, that's Y-A-R-N-S-P-O. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and a recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks everyone. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Lindsay.